Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial in Windows 8 and 8.1. Check it out. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial in Windows 8.1 and also Windows 8 uh, for beginners. So for those of us who have recently purchased a computer uh, with Windows 8 or 8.1 or plan on upgrading or just curious, uh, this is for us and, uh, and I hope you learn a lot from it. So let's check it out. Um, so the major difference is, by now most of us have probably used Windows 7 or are familiar with it, and uh, the major difference is from 7 to 8, uh, as far as UI, the user interface, the, what, what it looks like, is pretty much just a start menu and a few other set and a few other things I'll show you. Uh, and I'll just jump right into it here. So the start menu, when you first boot up, uh, I, you're going to see the new start menu. Now I have mine sorted to show all apps, I'll show you how to do that later on here. But uh, you're going to see the new start menu, uh, which is... All in all, if you know, remember before the start menu in Windows 7, you'd click, you know, on the start button, and it would it pop up showing folders, and then you'd highlight the folders, and it show apps uh, that you have installed, your software installed that's uh, listed in those folders, you know, and throughout the tr the tree they call it. So here instead, what Microsoft done is took in your all your apps and just spread it out on one canvas, you know, and to therefore uh, make it that much easier and hopefully faster to find. Uh, and I believe it is because it's bigger, uh, the, you know, for example, the icons are bigger, the text is bigger, so it's easier to see. And also, in, and, uh, and for example, instead of being in folders and having to, to go through the tree, file tree, and then it pops up on which, uh, which or, uh, soft, or folder you're highlighting, etc. Now you have everything listed under these columns. So like, let's say, for example, Skype, you know, before, instead of having to click on start and then go to maybe programs and then uh, find Skype folder and then, and then Skype, now all I gotta simply do is click on Skype or start, scroll right over, or in this case I can already see it here, and there's Skype, and boom, click on click on Skype, and it opens up Skype for desktop. So it is, I believe, that much faster in a sense. And you still have all the other software and like normal default accessories that come, like Windows Ease of Access System, um, etc., and the Windows accessories. But you also have some new things here uh, called Metro Apps. Uh, or at least that's what we used to call it, as, uh, the Metro apps, and also uh, Live Tiles, as Microsoft is, uh, is pushing with. And uh, for example, what a Live Tile simply is, is when you, uh, a Live Tile, for example, when, when usually you might have to use it in the, uh, in the original view where you're not showing all apps, but when you have the bigger tile, for example, it will, it will be, a, a Live Tile will simply be, like, let's say, for example, you're using the News app. Uh, it will constantly be updated from the internet to show you uh, what are the current latest news headlines. So it might show something here, you know, and then it'll transition over to another news headlines. And you can actually click on that and it'll open up and it'll take you to that news headline. So it's pretty cool. But the same thing with photos. Um, if you have photos in, in your folder, photos folder, it will use that and it will use that as kind of like a slideshow. So it'll show your photos for a few seconds and transition to the next photo. And by, by doing that, they call it a live or live tile. So there's different uh, features that each live tile uh, uh, you know, the functions that each live tile will be able to feature here. Uh, it also all depends on the app. Um, they also added a few apps, new apps as well. Uh, primarily all, all for touch-based users, um, but like alarms. But well, you can always use them if you're a desktop user as well. Like alarms, uh, calculator, food and drink, etc. And of course the, the Metro Inner Explorer. So, um, but that's really pretty much it. I mean, once you just get used to the difference of it, uh, it's, uh, it's actually can become very easier. Uh, it could become much easier, much simpler, and perhaps even faster. Um, so, um, yeah. So now let me show you the next, uh, the next uh, major thing that they did was, uh, as far as the UI, was add these PC settings. And so, uh, or actually, first I'll show you the charm. This is called a charm. When you swipe into the right, top right, or top left, uh, or bottom. I'm sorry, top right or, or bottom right you're gonna see this charm with these little functions. And here you can search for your apps, share, go to start menu, uh, your devices and your settings. Uh, also they have uh, app switching. So for example, when you swipe into the top left, if you have any apps running it, like I have a Metro app running here, it's gonna show you it and you can switch between them. Now, if you want to close these, you simply right click and go to close and then that's it. And once you, if you don't have any other multiple Metro apps running, this charm won't even pop up anymore. So that's cool. But for now, I'm going to show you the other difference, which is the new PC settings. I like to call it the new control panel, but uh, they call it the PC settings. And all this is pretty much designed for touch-based users. However, I have it appears that there might be some settings in here uh, that you can't might not be able to find anywhere else. So you definitely want to go through here, make sure everything's configured and set up, 
um, um, when you first upgrade to Windows 8 or 8.1 or have comp buy a computer with it on it because you never know something might be set up by default that you don't like like for example like you're uh, something do that you don't want, might not like affecting your privacy and you always want to make sure and, and go ahead and set that all up but here you'll be able to find your PC and devices well I'm sorry first when you first go in you'll have be able to personalize like your account picture your lock screen and set up a picture password if you want which I, which I'm not I like to still use uh, yeah, the original format of a password, but you know, it's a new way to have a password. That way, if you don't want to um, type something in, you can select your picture that is your password, and that will log you in. So that's pretty cool. Um, but PC devices, you can furthermore, you can do uh, customizations for the lock screen, your display, uh, mouse and touchpad typing, uh, also the corner and edges, like I showed you before. If, uh, uh, and this is actually how you one way how you can disable your charms and your app switching if you don't want to use them. And power sleep, autoplay, etc. Pretty much things that you can find in the control panel. And the majority of stuff is the things that you can find in the original desktop control panel. But some things um, you cannot, I, I believe. Uh, I, I, I haven't found it yet in the uh, control panel and all. But, anyways, um, another, other things here you have is your accounts. If you want to use a local account or a new Microsoft account. Um, and I do, I, and all, all depends on what type of person you are. If you're a type of person that logs in for different computers like home, school, and work. And you want everything to be set up exactly the way you left it the last time you logged in a microsoft account would be best for you because it's using SkyDrive and it's using the cloud the internet to pre-populate and make everything set up already the, arranged everything how you would like it but however keep in mind that does require and use i would believe more system resources especially uh, you have to make sure you have a good internet connection so if you're at a wi-fi hotspot and the internet connection is not that great um, then you might not want to consider using a sign in with a Hotmail account just because you might it might seem like the performance is really slow and lagging, but actually it's because it's, it's trying to pre-populate everything and pull everything down from the cloud. Um, however, if you're only going to be pretty much using one computer uh, and you take it around with you um, and you only need that one computer, a local account I highly recommend would be better for you because then that way it's uh, faster for you and you'll have better performance because it's running everything local instead of uh, having to use the cloud so I don't know it depends on what you want to do and, and to each your own of course but here's where you can also set up your SkyDrive um, so anyways you can do that in accounts I'm sorry you can use your Microsoft account or your or your um, uh, local account and so here you can also uh, set up your SkyDrive uh, your search and apps privacy network time language ease of access and update and recovery pretty much all the same things you find in control panel however I did it does appear that in privacy there's a few things here that i don't know if you can find anywhere else and so that's why i recommend you go through and, and these settings and, and check them all out and make sure everything's set the way you want it uh, to be from their defaults because sometimes you might not want stuff being shared or suggested etc uh, so you can go through here and change your privacy settings and especially with like location a lot of us might not want you know to use our location or let apps use them so here you can go through and you can turn it all off or you can turn it off for individual apps um, However, if you want, if you have GPS like on a tablet and you want to see exactly where you're at, then you want to leave that on at least for maps, for example, and uh, that or other apps that use it. That way, you can still have your uh, location features. And the same thing uh, for the Metro apps. Um, this is pretty much where, if you have a Metro app using your webcam or your microphone, this is where you would simply, uh, if you don't want that Metro app to use your webcam or your microphone, here's where you could adjust that. Um, but if like if you're not pretty much using ever using your Metro apps, I recommend turning this off just for privacy. Uh, security concerns and so that's it that's the PC settings uh, like I said it's primarily for touch based uh, as designed more for touch friendly uh, users and uh, other than that that as far as the UI that's pretty much the major only major uh, differences from Windows 7 when you, to Windows 8 and 8.1 there's a few new features that Windows 8 uh, that Microsoft added in Windows 8.1 like boot to desktop and um, how to disable the charms and stuff like that. And if you want to see that, check out my other video. It's called Windows. Uh, it's called uh, Windows 8.1 New Features. And check that out. And I show you exactly how to do that. It's really cool. And uh, that's and that's it's it's good for especially for desktop users because it saves you a little more time, a little less few clicks here and there. And that's always a good thing when everything can be faster, you know. Um, and then that's for the UI. Now, onto security, performance, stability. Microsoft has done an excellent job with Windows 8 and 8.1. That's my honest opinion. Um, they, for example, have uh, made it that much faster, for example. Like uh, you probably already heard this, but the boot up and the shutdown speeds are extremely faster, um, even on a traditional hard drive. If you use an SSD, you're going to be even faster uh, even than that. 
But even on a traditional hard drive, you could be booting up within 10 seconds or less. And you could be shutting down within maybe three, four seconds or less. Um, and so I really, really applaud them for that. That's, uh, I'm glad because I really used to hate before having to wait like 30, 45, 60 seconds to boot up in Windows, depending on how old or how slow or fast your computer was, etc. But that was always never a good thing. Um, even 25 seconds, 20 seconds was, seemed like pretty slow, you know, compared to the speeds of, that they have now. Uh, security is also that much better. Um, they even have their own uh, security built in, which is really cool. The Defender, Windows Defender. And that's actually gotten a little bit better, believe it or not. Before it kind of started off like, yeah, well, I don't know. But now uh, they've really improved it to match a lot of the other big brands' uh, 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 anti malware softwares out there. Uh, and yeah, true, maybe it's not as good as like something as, like Norton Internet, Internet Security or whatever. But it's pretty close, and they've done some tests on it, etc. And it was able, it it uh, it actually ran uh, really good, and was able to catch a lot of things um, that uh, maybe some other freebie anti malware software could not. So it's really cool, and it's integrated, so that's always a good thing as well. So you don't have to install extra software. We always like that, right? Uh, and as far as stability as well, I honestly have gotten zero B size blue screens of this. I've gotten zero crashes even. Um, I mean, it's amazing how, uh, statistically, I have to say, so far I've had, I guess, 100% stability, uh, you know, even compared to Windows 7. I mean, Windows 7 was really good, too, but uh, every now and then I might get something like a crash here and there. But here, with, so far, with Windows 8.0, honestly, I have not experienced anything. So, um, so in conclusion, if you're considering making the uh, switch uh, to Windows 8, or, or and of course, uh, in this case, you want to go 8.1, I highly recommend it um, because it's Microsoft's done a really good job with making it better, uh, less on system resources, making it faster and more stable and more secure. And um, and that's and that's always a good thing. And and what's also really cool is that you can even install it on really old computers. A lot of old computers will still accept it. Now you might not have you might have some little bit of driver issues depending on how old you really want to go. Um, but honestly, I've even installed it successfully on a 2005 model computer uh and i had a few driver issues uh, but other than that it was it was great it actually still ran faster and better than uh the previous album system i had on it so uh, it's really cool uh i really i do like it all in all and i know there's a lot of negative reviews and stuff and at first i was also hesitant as well but i think once you try it out and once you get used to the new start menu especially which doesn't take long to get used to at all you will will like it you will will like appreciate how faster it is and how most how more secure it is and stable it is and of course in in general with software you always want to stay up to date always up to keep it up to date if it's automatic updates or whatever always stay up to date uh, for the best stability performance and security you always want to do that all right so let me guys let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, let me know if you plan on upgrading to windows 8 or 8.1 have you already done so um, what do you like better, that or Windows 8.1, for example, or Windows 7, or are you having any issues or, or problems you need help with? Let me know. I'll be glad to uh, help you out with that or answer any questions or just hear back from you guys. All right. Okay, everybody. So this has been another one of my tutorials. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think and what you'd maybe like to see next time. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe. It's the best way to stay up to date and informed with all the latest how-tos, tutorials, tips and tricks, and other awesome content that will be posted in the future. And please go ahead and share with all your friends and family. You never know who else may be in need of some tech help too. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time.